Welcome to Let Freedom Ring. Uh, as always, we have security here. We're keeping Soapy Pre-Op out. We're not too concerned about him. He's a coward. He's never going to come back and try to do anything ever again anyways. But my guest this week, uh, John Meekins. Uh, John, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, sir. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Let's get to know you a little bit. Um, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? I was born in Lowell, and I grew up in Nashua. Awesome, awesome. Now, did you go to Nashua High, or were you like pre-split, or... High school. Or post split, I should say. Yeah. I, I would have been in the north. Okay. Didn't quite finish that all the way through. Okay. All right. And um, now we know that you know we promote the show. We know that you umpire softball. What are three things everybody should know about you? I'm a father first. Changes your whole perspective of life. So that comes first. See, I thought about this question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a very private guy. Yeah. Yeah. So it was hard, but I guess we'd say big on respect. Okay. If you give respect, I'll give it right back to you. If you're not, I'm just going to not. I'll avoid it. I won't talk to you. And that would be sense of humor. I mean, I'm a guy who likes to laugh. I yeah. do have, <laughs> my shirt does say limping ain't easy. So. Yeah, yeah. It'd be humor. I got a good sense of humor. Good, good. I agree on the respect thing, too. It's like, I think that goes very underplayed, and especially some of the umpires. You treat me like, I remember uh, what was Coach Conley when I was in middle school said, respect is a two-way street. Absolutely. You know, if you respect me, I'll respect you. I, I like that answer a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, sticking with the theme of the show, which is Let Freedom Ring, and we get a lot of different answers on this question, but what does it mean to you to be an American? I know, it's a tough one. <laughs> it's a tough question because we live in a world now that was. it seems like we're getting pulled away from it yeah. and not the way it's supposed to be. But it's supposed to be free. Say what you want to say and not be ridiculed for feeling how you feel. We all got our opinions. Yeah. Should be able to do it as Americans as we should. So more or less just the freedom of doing what we feel. Yeah, I think, because I, I do believe, like, the freedom of speech thing is such a big thing. And free thought, though. Mm -hmm. Like, free thought is, I think, even bigger. You know, not that that's, like, one of the actual... You live in North Korea, you don't get to do that. No, you got told you know? what to do. Yeah. Dictatorship and otherwise. <laughs> yeah. You mean, and that seems like we're going down that road. We can't do... We all have our opinions, but it yeah. doesn't make right or me wrong. No, that's very true. And everybody gets away from that America's freedom of speech. You can say what you want to say yep. and move on. Well, I feel like sometimes, too, like this is the big thing. is like we're trying to cancel one person's speech with our speech. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. In, in that way, mm -hmm. you know? Because I know we've talked about cancel culture on this show before. And that's the big thing because everybody's allowed to say something, but it's when you're trying to silence somebody, mm -hmm. you know. Understanding. But, is yes. The key, <laughs> yeah. Is the key to it all. Yeah. No, but good answer. Um, let's get into current events now. Uh, the world felt like it shut down for I don't know, five hours, six hours or so. Uh, Facebook did not work. I, Colin, were you all right I, with that? You, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, wow. What were you thinking when that? When that? I don't know if you're a big like you're on it, but yeah. not. Pro I probably use it a lot more than normal yeah. people. Uh I laughed. That work. I worked during yeah. the day, so I was at work, but I thought it was just kind of humorous. I mean, if there's a like, little backstory to it, and it's kind of suspicious that well, the all timing. three of you shut down in the timing. That's yeah. wrong. So The timing was very But I imagine odd. a lot of people went crazy because that's all they do, like 24-7. Yeah. I'm probably sure those people didn't know. It's called reality. Back to Two. You, me and you were on the same age. You yeah. go knock on your friend's door. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see what they're doing? Call them. Yeah. Shoot them a text. Yeah, I mean, like, it was, because, you know, I have a desk job. Yeah. So a lot of times I'm, I'm doing my work, check. Like, it is something on the side to just have. Yeah, occupy the time being. <laughs> yeah, like, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, because you get your work done and you can look at your phone. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. There was a time where even Facebook, I had to go to a computer. Like, I didn't think about Facebook all day because if I wanted to do something on Facebook, I'd have to go home and go to my computer. Yeah. Now it's like. Everything is on your phone. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Like, did you ever think of that growing up? Like, you would have a device that could do everything? No, I always thought it, even like a map. That I always have to have maps in my, <laughs> like my grandparents had. Yeah. Like, oh, I got to pull this out. Where am I? Now you just, where you want to eat? Keep driving till we find a restaurant. And you stopped at the first restaurant because you didn't know what was next. Now you can just find it. Yeah. It's kind of crazy to think about because, like, when we were kids, probably everything was more word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember finding the National Garden. Yep. And it wasn't like today, like they could promote everywhere. You had to hear someone liked it and then you could go to the place, you know. Yep. 
Um, very wild times. I was a little nervous because that's how I run the pickup league. Is all through Facebook. So I'm thinking, is no one going to show up tomorrow if I don't get a post out? Right. You know? And then I think about all the people, like, even the show. I didn't message you through text. No. I used Messenger on Facebook, <laughs> so I'm like, is my guest even going to know to come to the show? Like, we are, like, super reliant on it, that. It is. And it goes away. It's, it's going to be scary because people don't know how to handle the normalcy of, like, you know I mean? Yeah. Instead, you shoot them a message or you just watch their Facebook and see what they're doing instead of shooting them a text like, hey, you want to go get dinner, catch up the old school way. Yeah, I mean, and even that, like now I'm going to start getting people's phone numbers Absolutely. and not just rely on that because it, if it just goes, what's even crazier is like if you think about it, too, when we were kids, there was no text messaging. You had to call, get on the phone and call, mm -hmm. you know, so wild times. We survived. <laughs> yeah. I made it through all right. <laughs> I did okay. We survived five hours. Were you suspicious, though? Yes. Because the 60 Minutes interview came out the day before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm Definitely. wondering. Because I've heard people just say, like, they've probably cleaned some stuff out. And... If you clean it, it'd be an annual, yearly thing, not a, yeah. hey, it's been around for a while. Oh, sh let's... Mm -hmm. let's... Maybe we got to get rid let's of this. Let's clean some. Let's do cleaning today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, very, very wild times. Um, we all survived. Anybody that was, you know, I hope everybody's okay. I know there was a lot of people stressed out. I might have been one of them. Not because I want to get my thoughts out all the time, but I do organize a lot of things through that. And now I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to have to start getting phone numbers again. But uh, anyways, uh, Urban Meyer, are you familiar with this oh, coach? Yes. He yeah. goes back to Florida, Ohio State. Uh, now he's with the Jaguars. Um, caught kind of groping a woman at his restaurant. Um, any take on this? Did the Jaguars make too big a deal about it? Or is this kind of just falling with the code of conduct that the NFL kind of has going on? It's a tough one because it's just a photo. My yeah. opinion of like his photos, we all connect. Again, the opinion of it is what yeah. you projected you see. What's yeah. the backstory of it? Maybe it's someone he's really close to and there's nothing wrong and she was okay with it. But if you're just looking from the outside, it's all you see. Yeah. So if they don't know the backstory, can't punish him or make a big deal out of it until you know details. It's just a photo. Yeah, and I mean... Should he be touching a lady that he doesn't know? We're like, absolutely not. Because I saw the first <laughs> video and it was like, she was just kind of moving around. I was like, okay, it's his restaurant. What's the big deal? But then there was another one where he actually like kind of grabbing her and that's a different story though. yeah and you know so uh, someone texted me they said uh his wife deleted her twitter today or something like that because she was getting harassed well, he's a married man so in hindsight it's a it's a no-no either way you don't touch a female yeah. without permission anyways to do it that you're married and doing that and the power he holds it's a well-known guy it's not yeah. like it's he's got national titles he's put on some good players so <laughs> he's a known man yeah you shouldn't be groping no. No matter, I mean, unless that's your wife. Yeah. If not. That's, eh. that, that's your business. But right. So, yeah. It was, it was crazy because <laughs> the first one I was just like. I didn't see the second one. <laughs> someone sent it to me because I said, I don't think this is a big deal. Right. I said, all right, she's just dancing on him. I'm like, this is the story. So the Jaguars are really releasing a statement on this. And then someone's like, no, you got to watch the further video. I go, oh, okay. But uh, Urban Meyer. It's not going well in Jacksonville right now. No. I don't think they've won yet, and I, I don't think Trevor Lawrence is uh, too used to losing like this. <laughs> no, four losses yeah. in his uh, eight years of high school and college. That's crazy. Four losses in the NFL. It is very different league. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, that's just current events. Let's get to talk about your umpiring career right now, because this is a big thing that you do. How many and how many games did we say that you you've I've done? I've done over. I just wrapping up my eighth season. It's over sixteen hundred. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, well, let's get to know. How did you become an umpire? So my son's great grandfather has been a umpire for now. It's got to be about sixty five years. Oh wow! And he used to come and watch me play. And he told me, he's like, go be an umpire. You know exactly what you're doing. You yeah. can see it. So I gave it a shot. And if it wasn't for that man, I probably wouldn't be an umpire. <laughs> yeah. 
Now is he still is he still doing it now or? At the age of eighty nine, he still does high school. Oh wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, that's pretty cool. Now, do you ever do you ever do any baseball, or is it strictly just softball? Just softball? Mm -hmm. um, uh, what What's kept you kind of doing it? Like, because I know, as I had a little experience over the weekend, where I'm like, this is completely miserable. Mm -hmm. uh, what keeps you doing it? It's like I tell everybody that tells me, "Oh, I'm the worst umpire. I'm horrible." For those one comments I get, I get about. I'm not even trying to be conceited here. I get about two to 30 positive comments. And my biggest thing I tell people is I don't care about coaches or parents. The kids are happy when they're done. Win or lose, my job is done. Yeah. It happens about almost every game I touch. Because I work with the kids. I'm not, a, I'm not that guy that's <laughs> like just there for a paycheck. It's a passion. I love yeah. doing it. So it has its days and the moments. Slow pitch is a little different. That's a different <laughs> world. <laughs> Slow pitch, I do it because I played so long. Yeah. I played 11 years, so I know how to work with the guys. So that one, it's easy. It's like keeps me still involved because I played yeah. for a long time. Just clearly, my legs aren't what they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> so it keeps me involved. Now, did it? it uh, so, do you like doing more of working with the kids? Then is it more like? Because that's you can have actually learning opportunities and stuff like that. Slow pitch, probably can't. No one's gonna. Everybody thinks they're the they're the best. Oh yeah, yeah. no one wants to take my advice. I'm sitting there telling them they're just looking at me like I'm crazy or I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like yeah, sure. I'd have to say the kids just yeah. because of the the teaching moments, the lessons, and just watching the kids grow. I got a lot of kids I've known since they were ten. Now they're seniors in high school. Oh wow, that's awesome. Some of them have already aged out yeah so you, i've got to watch them grow and i've been told multiple times by kids they keep playing because of me because oh, i make it i'm not the boring umpire i'm not out i'll yeah. stretch it i'll have fun with the kids yeah yeah so definitely the kids yeah i like that because i mean honestly like as much as i love softball it's a kid's game it is you know and even they, slow pitch it's a kid's game it's still. a kid's game it's it's we're trying to extend trying to have some fun as we get older yeah. You know, at the same time, the, the learning experience for them, I think, is probably the most, you know, important. Mm -hmm. It keeps it alive. Like. Yeah. Um, do you just do the Nashua area, or? I'm actually on the Lowell board. I'm oh, on Mass, okay. Because my son's grandfather, my grandfather was on the Lowell board, so. Okay. And I'm I'm on the fence of coming to U-Trip next year, so I can do Nashua, Pelham. And I get to deal with all the people I played with for years. Yeah, I'm on the fence of it. <laughs> hey, we'd like to have you on the board for Sundays if we can get you. I'll do. I'll to be on the board all day for that. Yeah, that's yeah. where it all started from. So it's oh, okay. It's close to me. Yeah, because I mean, it, you know, I'm planning on taking it over. I still got to talk to Sandy and everything, but I think we need to redo it. But we also have to have the right people. Not that Sandy and Max are the wrong people or anything like that. We just have to have. A lot of different ideas, I think. I'm actually yeah. I'm the umpire in chief for the town of Barica. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't live there, but yeah, they yeah. asked me. I said, sure. Why not? Because I've all made an impact on all those people's like life somehow. Yeah. From umpire and stuff. No, I love that. That's awesome. Um, what is your favorite part? And I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask this two parts. What's your favorite doing? The kids, but the adults too. The favorite with kids, when you walk into a, a tournament in a complex, you know how it is. Same thing with fast pitch as it is slow pitch. And you get to walk by people and you hear kids get excited that you're umping their game and the happiness and the smile on their face and want to go out there. That's yeah. my favorite thing. And it happens, I'm not trying to be conceited or anything, but yeah. it's straight facts that happens to me everywhere I go. No matter where I am. Yeah. <laughs> slow, fast pitch. Slow pitch, my favorite thing with slow pitch is they talk a lot of shit. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But the humor and the fun I get to have with them. Yeah. Like, I don't have to just take it. I can literally read my mouth right back. Like, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> he says well, a lot of things. You know, right back to him, and there's no hard feelings. And yeah. And continues to drop. So, I think that's my favorite thing with slow pitch. So, no matter where I go, it's the same thing. I can talk shit to all of you. Yeah. No, I, I, I enjoy that, too, because I don't like an umpire. Like, there's this particular umpire that I don't care for, that he is... Well, it, it, it's burned. It's not really like I used to along with him. He said some things to me on Facebook 
that had nothing to do with softball. But then I've seen how he does. And he just lets every little thing get to him. You know, and, and I might have done that Sunday, but I never even said anything. But I'm not like an umpire. Right. But he does it on a consistent basis. Like, says, that's it. One more, you're gone. It's like, well, they only said one thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. So when I do slow pitch, I tell the guys one. I'm like, I have two rules, guys. I don't care what you do. You can drink. You can smoke. Whatever. You swear at me or disrespect me, I'm not even wanting to your car. Yeah. There's no need for it. You can feel your way, but just watch how you talk. And that's it. And some of them try to test me at first. So they say, I'm like, bye. And they're like, uh, I'm like, gotcha. That's it. I told you. Because <laughs> yeah. I have humor. So like, even yeah. you can tell me bad call, blue. I'm going to smile at you and be like, you're entitled to your opinion. Yeah. Mine's the only one that matters right now. So keep walking. And I, and I like that way that you put it, though. Like, because like I think what this umpire takes, any question of him is disrespect. Yeah. It's not. But it's not like, there's a difference between going after someone aggressively or just saying like I don't like that call granted I didn't like anybody disagreeing with my calls on Sunday when I you know I never did. I can be wrong. I'm right. even when I'm wrong I'm right yeah <laughs> I was just like but but yeah I, I agree with that um what what's your least favorite part about both the parents first actually there's fast pitch it's parents and I'll tell you what the age group is 12s really those 10 they don't they're okay yeah. Get a little older, they're like, I've been through this too much. The 12 seem to think that they know everything. Every little thing. But parents just constantly, 200 feet away, screaming, like, hey, just shut up. Yeah. That's the worst part. Do you think, they're, do you think a lot of them think their kids are good? Because they're, they're thinking probably they do well in middle school, they do well in high school. I know where this is going. Maybe they're going to go oh, to college I know where this for is, it. Everybody, yeah. they all think the kid's a D1 player. Yeah. And, and my... The amount of games I've done a fast pitch, I can tell you what, there's only been probably less than 20 that I've been like, yep. Yeah. And that's not even from around here. They come from like Maine and stuff that, not even around here. Yeah, it's not that easy. I mean, and we also live in New England. We're not playing year round. Yes. You know? Mm hmm. So, uh, least favorite part about adults and slow pitch. <laughs> I'm sure there's actually probably more with this. <laughs> yeah. The cockiness of players yeah. that go out there and literally think they're hot shit. Just because you hit a home run make you a good ball player. Yeah. That just makes you a home run hitter. Yeah. So, and that's, I'm going to say this and I don't care. It's half of them that play. Yeah. Just because you can hit a home run doesn't make you a great ball player. And that's the, my least favorite because they all come so cocky. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of that are humble and yeah. you don't hear, but most of them are just very cocky and ignorant, and that's yeah. what bothers me. I've seen so much stuff in all the years that just <laughs> made me go, what are we doing here? Aren't we all, like, grown? Like yeah. I said, it's it's a bunch of adults playing a kid's game still. Yeah. And a lot of them take it like they're playing for, like, 10 grand, or they're yeah. getting, like, contracts out of this. You're not. It's fun. Yeah, it's, it's you're going to go home tonight and be a little happy, and then you're going to be, you're going to go to work tomorrow. Right. <laughs> sore probably, but you're going. Yeah. <laughs> now, so that's my favorite cockiness. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I you know me personally, I just like being around it. I mm -hmm. like to be able to still do something. Um, but yeah, you do find that from time to time. But then as you get to know like most of the people, even people that have been like mad, like been like, oh, what a jerk. And then I get to know them, I go, all right. Sometimes mm -hmm. like the heat of the moment people just act a little bit different than maybe they would mm -hmm. on, a, on a regular day. Absolutely. And from playing so long, I, yeah. I've known this, so I always, you mean there are guys that come up to me and be like, Blue, I'm sorry. I'm like, I get it. Trust yeah. me. I've been there. And anybody that knows me when I first started playing, I had a mouth like crazy. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. so I get those guys. I'm like, I get it. Yeah. You mean? And I appreciate it, but just watch yourself. That's yeah. all it is. We all have our moments. Like, It is true, but then I'm sure you have the frequent flyers that, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You're like, all right. They talk shit before even walking. Like, I'm yeah. in the parking lot and they're running their mouth. It's yeah. like, oh, here we go again. It's like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. um, what's the craziest story that you've had umpiring? Oh, man. If there's multiple, that's fine, too. Yeah, well, because I could, again, though, can always break the softball down. Because yeah. for, fa for fast pitch, it'd have to be this year. I had one that was crazy. I didn't like a instruction call at the plate that I made. Wouldn't stop. I cleaned it. The head coach said okay. Assistant coach wasn't having it. Kept talking. Kept yelling. Warning. I gave him two warnings. I don't ever give two warnings. Yeah. 
And so we tossed him. He's walking up the third base behind the dugout talking to my partner. And he tells my partner he's going to meet him in the parking lot. And he said something else. So we shut it down. All of a sudden, the guy starts screaming. And next thing you know, a cop's showing up. Oh, my goodness. I should have pulled my phone out and videotaped it because yeah. it's pretty humorous. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, it was just constant, like, they were screaming over the cops who had all of us. And we're at our car. Yeah. We're just like, okay. And just wouldn't stop. And is this guy now, is this guy a parent or? I think he was a parent. He was also yeah. assistant coach. But even the whole game before he even got ejected, it was nonsense screaming. Yeah. I will never call a pitch this high of a girl's letter. For yeah. the life of me, I don't care. Only yeah. tens, because yeah. they're ten. Yeah. I wouldn't give it to him. And he kept screaming. I just let it go, because I've been doing it so long that some things, I'm like, you scream all you want. Yeah. So when you start being then, it was just the aggressiveness of it. Yeah. I mean, I've been told personally by myself more than once that I'll meet you in the parking lot. Yeah. Mm, whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's it's happened. Slow pitch would be, uh, I've been charged at, at the same time, then dirt thrown at me in the same process. Oh, my god. And after I vacated the field, walking to my car, yeah. I get a ball thrown at me. Misses, and you can hit somebody else's windshield. And a lot of people, if they're watching this, will know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, my about. gosh. And then... I think that was like two years ago. That was a pretty uh, interesting one. Over a call. He wasn't on the base. And I was doing the bases. I called dead ball, called him up. And yeah. You're not in contact. Yeah. It's not a it's not a cheap shot. It's a rookie mistake on your end. Like, it's yeah. amateur. Yeah. Your foot needs to be in contact, dude. Yeah. And, and then another one was uh, slow pitch. I hate to even say that he was a firefighter in a different town, not Nashua. Yeah. Literally told me that because I, I rung him up, didn't like it, that he was going to kick my leg from underneath me and kick the shit out of me. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't really care how big you are. That's yeah. fine. You could, But you could say what you want. You don't personally attack me. That's too yeah. deep. Yeah. That's probably the second craziest one of slow pitch. Yeah, I mean, I've seen all kinds of, like, there was one time I was in Manchester playing, and these, these guys lost a the game. They started blaming the umpire and call, making accusations that, man, you better have some credible facts before you start yelling that for everybody to hear. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it is crazy. I like to say that I think there's more positive. Yeah. But, I mean, from an umpire's perspective, even just what I saw like, doing it this Sunday, I'm like, man, it's a thankless job, so we really appreciate that you do it. <laughs> you know? Um, but, yeah, we'll get, we get some fan questions and comments here. First one from Big Kelly. We knew he was, he was going to come up. <laughs> um, he's the be he says he's the best guy. Uh, guy is great, a great umpire, great person. So he thinks very highly of you. Uh, he takes a lot of. I'm not. I, I try not to swear on the show. Colin, we're good, right? Uh, he takes a shit from people. Uh, from me, actually, uh, all good. Uh, fun on the field when he's umping. Um, he does a great job, regardless of how people act towards him. And that's great, Ali. So he thinks highly of you. Hello, Mr. Keller. Yeah. He, every time he walks in, I hear the same thing, no matter where. Blue, get off your knees, you're in the game. Yeah. Every time. And he tries to hide. And you know Greg. You yeah, ain't yeah. hiding much behind somebody. Yeah. I love you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I let it go because he's so respectful outside of it. It's yeah. fun humor for him. And I just, I hate to say this, he could say what he swears at me, I would not toss that man. Yeah. For the, unless he literally pushes my buttons, but he knows but I'd let him get away with it because yeah. he's very respectful outside of it. And he'll come to me and be like, Meeks, instead of just screaming at me. And he'll disagree with me, but he's like, and he just moves on. Yeah, yeah. So he falls in my face. Greg is, Greg's a good guy. I think sometimes he gets a bad rap because he does talk a lot. Talk a lot of shit. Yeah. He did. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he, he's a good guy. I like Greg a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Brittany Damon, she just said, Meeks. Yeah. Um, so I think Brittany's a fan too. Everybody back with Brittany. You know, elementary school. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah she uh, known Brittany a long time. So, um, let's get into sports a little bit here. All right, Sunday night, very interesting night here. Brady's return to Gillette. Um, man, <laughs> it felt like the Super Bowl to me. Yeah. Because I wanted to win the game so bad. Um, what did you think of the game? Dragged out. I'm a, I, I watch football, but yeah. I'm a big baseball guy, so okay. I'll watch football. I don't get deep into it. And then the game was dragged out. 
It was way. I mean, it was nine o'clock when the first quarter ended. It's a long time. Oh, they start so late. And it, I think it was good for football, though. I yeah. think it needed to happen. Oh, I agree. Because yeah. the ratings are, it's just one of those football kind of, I don't know, it's been on a little bit of a hit. It's good for it. I mean, Brady versus Belichick. I, I would have loved to see years. it in a Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. It would have been more, I do think Belichick did get a better chip. Uh, he played Brady better. His play, play call was beautiful. Like it was nice. They were doing Brady. some. I because a lot of people were like, "Oh, McDaniel's was horrible in that game." I go, "I thought McDaniel's was calling a good game." You know, mm -hmm. I. I mean, it did feel surreal though, to see Tom Brady, in Gillette Stadium, not as a patriot. Because like last year, pandemic year, it's on the box. No one's even in the stands. It didn't feel like it felt, like it hit me in the. In the yeah. heart. I'm like, that was our guy. Mm -hmm. And he's 44. Why is he even still playing? <laughs> you know, like. It's like all greats, though. They yeah. got to go somewhere else to try, try to win another one to yeah. stamp it. You can, He has enough to stamp it before, but Kretzky did it. They all do it. They all go somewhere else to try to say they did it without. So-and-so, yeah. He'll be back. He'll finish. You think? Absolutely. Because at this point, next year, he'll be 45. Mm -hmm. I knew he was going to play to his 50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's un like, I don't I don't know how he does it, but yeah. God bless him. TB12 method, I might have to get on it. Um, Me too. Just, <laughs> uh. What did you think, though, at the end of the game? They got, it's third down, and they're going to fourth down. Uh, they go for the kick. I think it was, what, 56 yards. If I'm wrong on that, someone correct me. Um, and I don't think... Uh, Folk uh, is ever really made, or that might be his like furthest. Did they not trust Mac Jones to try to get that first down? Because I think if they get it, they win. Mm -hmm. You know, because even if they got the field goal, Brady's getting the ball back. I mean, for seeing it for so years, because if you flip that script, you put Mac on the Bucks and Brady back on the Patriots, what is he doing there? He's going for it. Yeah. I don't think he had. He trusts Jones. There's a reason why he took him. Yeah. It's just not fully yet. They're not there yet. I think I think you're right. But oh, man, I was just thinking, go for it. Just go for it. You know. Either way, you're losing the game because you're not. He's not going to make that field goal. No, especially in that weather. Yeah. The rain plays a big factor. Yeah, and it, as it went up, I go, oh, doink. Mm -hmm. And it, that was just like clear, clear night. Yeah. A little bit of breeze might make it. Yeah. But the rain's not going to make it. So just went for it. Worst case scenario, you played a great game. You lost by two. Yeah, that's nothing to hang your head about. I agree. I wish, I wish they did. Put the and faith if, in the kid. And then if he does it, man, that would have been huge. You know, he, he's a good quarterback. I yeah. know a lot of people don't realize it yet. I'm very happy that with him. As much as I supported Cam, I knew Cam wasn't the quarterback for the future. No. I just knew we needed somebody because there was no plan last year. No. <laughs> You know, um, Stephen Gilmore traded to the Panthers. Any thoughts on that? I mean, business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Belichick just says, "All right." You know, Belichick's one of those though. You mess up or do what he doesn't tell you to do or ask you to do. That's it. Bye. He's just gonna yeah. get rid of you. Don't care who you are. He really doesn't. Look at Antonio Brown. Yeah. You mean you weren't behaving? Okay. When you put him out there. That's dangerous with Brady. Just yeah. you don't want to behave. Yeah. You don't want to behave or do what you're told. Bye. And I mean, the fact that, that he didn't, you know, it feels like even now he's just like, all right, Brady, you want to go? All yeah. right. You mm -hmm. know? You're unhappy? Bye. Yeah. Like he just, Stephen A. Smith was going on about how just Belichick just dumps players like yesterday. And I'm like, oh, he might be onto something here. He's not completely wrong. Yeah. But there's like, like I said before, there's always a backstory. But yeah. the way Belichick runs it, it's got to be you didn't do what he asked of you. And then yeah. enough's enough. But the crazy thing is, it, wor it's wor it worked for two years. Can it work without Tom Brady to do this type of stuff? No, because Brady kept them together. Like, Aunt Brown, he stayed around a lot longer than Belichick probably wanted him to. Yeah. Because of Brady. He's got that influence of trying to better yourself. Edelman's a perfect example. He came in, he wasn't Brady. He must have listened to Brady and listened to your coaches. You listen to Belichick, you become 
you can become a Brady. Yeah. Then now, if you have Belichick and Brady, <coughs> listen to those two, you can become an Edelman. I could see that too. Yeah. It's who you surround yourself with. Like, um, I mean, I used to watch a lot of games after my games and study like the older guys and how they do things and how they've been doing it for years and been crafting my own. And you take their knowledge. So it's the same thing with Belichick and Brady. Take their knowledge. It'd be great. Listen. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta I listen. <laughs> I like that. And hopefully, <clears throat> it would have been nice. I mean, if we really could. If Brady had stayed and he could have mentored Mac Jones, if they would, if they even would have been able to get him, if they got I don't know him, if their record would have been as bad right. last year. If they could him. have and they did, that's man, that could have been Oof. something. As soon as Brady, Brady retired next year, and be all right, would be all right. Yeah, yeah. A year under Brady, it's all that kid would really. Yeah, because I, I mean, mean, he had Nick Saban, so yeah, <laughs> that's a Belichick alone. <laughs> and he had to. I know he had to work hard to even get the starting job at, at Alabama too. Absolutely. Uh, another big thing, though, that happened over the week. This has been a good, pretty sports-talking week. Red Sox beat the Yankees in the one-game playoff uh, wild card. Um, how are you feeling about that? It was sweet. <laughs> yeah. It was so. It was nice, though. You knew it was going to come down to it from the get-go, from yeah. early on. For them to pull it off was more impressive. It's very inconsistent. A lot of wins, but very inconsistent team. Yeah, because I mean, in the beginning, it was all like, oh, these guys. Because I'll admit, I didn't watch a ton of games this year. Me neither. Um, it gets harder as you get older, especially when I play. You know, if you're umpiring it almost every night, I'm playing almost every night. Yeah, I get home. I'm going to bed. I'm yeah, not yeah. For nothing. But man, um, they did it. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Because you know, they were hot all year. I mean, it's been nice to have Alex Cora, I guess, back as the coach. Yes. Yeah. Sox always do better though when they come out of the wild card. That's true. Yeah. Cause that you know everybody's portraying this as they can't beat the Rays. I don't know about that. I think we can. I do too. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's it comes down to one of those of Cora's together. He put a beautiful lineup, defensive lineup against the Yankees. If he can do it against Tampa, who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? Yeah. Now, how do you feel? Like, all right, let's just put it back. We're going. Let's go back to 1999. And those those couple of years, did you ever think there was a time? Because now it feels like we have the Yankees number. Oh yeah. Back in because I I posted something on Facebook the other day. I go because I, I I know a lot of people in their early twenties now, or even people in their later twenties. They did not experience the horrors that we did growing up. Remember when the Red Sox were like irrelevant? They, they, they didn't matter. Then they finally got Pedro and. They get to the ALCS in 99, and they lose to the Yankees, and it's like, when are we going to get there again? And I think 2001, they had Spark. I remember Carl Everett came to the yeah. team. 2002 uh, was mm, 2003. We're like, this is it. I don't we're making it. You know, and they Damn lose. Damn Aaron Boone. And Aaron Boone is <laughs> the home run. Damn knuckleball. And, you know, someone wrote, they're like, well, it was only like 13 years ago. I go, no, it wasn't. I go, we won the World Series. 17 years ago. Absolutely. One. And I remember 1999 very, very well. I remember 2003 very, very well. Did you ever think, be in a, uh, back then, did you ever think there'd be a time where the Red Sox would have the Yankees number? Because it feels like right now that we do. No. Same. <laughs> I thought George was going to live forever. Then. Yeah. As long as George was alive, we were yeah. doomed. Because yeah. George would go to any power to. Make sure we didn't get what we wanted. Yeah. George left and was like, oh. And then he said, oh, three came along. And you're like, okay. We had it. Oh, four came along. Great year. And we get to that series and we're like, oh. We're toast. Three again. Oh, boy. Yeah. Miracles do happen. Yeah. But then it was oh, seven. Yeah. You're like, oh, three years ago. Okay. And then it happened 13. You're like, okay. And 13, they had no business winning it. That wasn't the greatest team ever. No. <laughs> They just wanted it. It was after the the bombings. Absolutely, yeah. I think that was motivation and the spark of pushing it. And then eighteen, you're like I, dominant. So, so to see him, yeah. no, because there's people that die whatever, never got to see one. Yeah, in their whole life. And it's, I love it. It's surreal, and I think like New England sports as a whole, like all the pa like I've gone to the parades, like these later ones, like. 2018 I went and I felt like the kids like they're just fooling and I'm like they expect this it's normal yeah if you were 
born in like 98 and up, let's say, because you're even like a twenty mid. It's normal. The last 21 years of New England sports have been phenomenal. Yeah, like no other city can beat us. No. So they, they're spoiled, and they don't understand the struggles of Red Sox. Was, you know the whole saying. There's always next year. Yeah. And then it became our year, and then it became our year again and mm -hmm. again. And every, and, But since we won it, every year we didn't make it, there was been like one or two years that were like, well, that just went to. Yeah. But most time it was like, uh, there was decent good runs. It's just. This is an ownership, though, that I also feel like there'll be off years and there'll be great years. And that's how it seems like um, John Henry runs all his franchises. Because it doesn't seem like he just does this with the Red Sox. I think Marlins. Liber well, the Marlins, Liverpool, some racing group that he does. It's like, the guy's done, all, you know, it's, it's crazy what they've done here. But, you know, the point I was trying to drive home the other night was like, I never envisioned this, you know. And uh, it's crazy. Not at all. Not for the Sox. <laughs> no, I mean, and it wasn't for the Patriots either. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was a kid, you know, I mean, they won when I was at like junior in high school, but when I was in elementary school, it was like. Pages who? Yeah, I mean, they got to a Super Bowl, but it was like after that, it was right back to being in the toilet. Yep. So, the same with the Sox in like 99, you mean? It was like after that, it seemed like we were down for a couple years yeah, down. Yeah, because 2000, I don't remember much to happen. Like, the, I, there's nothing memorable about the mm. 2000. No, not even so, one or two. Carl Everett. Carl Everett's all I can think about is no one. Because mm. 99 is Pagel's year. Yeah. I mean, no one's going to top that one. Well, we started to be like, oh, wow, this guy really is is what they say. Yeah, he, he might be five-something, but I'll tell yeah. you that. He was unbelievable. Pitcher. I was at his Hall of Fame induction. It was unbelievable. Um, all I remember about 2002 was we had Ricky Henderson for the year. <laughs> oh, man, that's right. Yeah, I, that's, that sticks demon. out of my head. I was like, oh, Ricky finally got it. And I want to say he finished. That might have been his last year because was it? Yeah, was it 2002? Because I'm trying to think when he won the Hall of Fame. I could be wrong. Might have been. If he was, he wasn't. I know Tony time. Perez was, or I don't know. Don't quote me on anything in 2002 because that's kind of a blur, blur too. <laughs> um, or maybe, did he go? I don't know. I could have sworn we had Ricky Anderson at some point, but I'll have to check it. Um, what are some of your top uh, sports moments that you've seen? Uh, 04 World Series is big with me. Yeah, I don't think there's much to top that. Right. And I also have a personal tie to the 04 World Series, so that one's very, that's all my top of my list always. So personally, I've watched a girl throw a perfect game. Oh, really? And I'm thick. Yeah. No, no hitter. She got a no hitter because she gave up a, there was an error in the outfield, so she got someone on. So, like, I've seen a no hitter. Which was actually pretty impressive to watch and do. High school game or tournament ball. Tournament ball. I think they were six, sixteen. Okay. It was just phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. It was just one after another. It was great. Third. Oh wow. So you get an age, you see a lot of sport and things. There's a lot. I mean, the Patriots world. gave us a lot. The Red Sox gave us a lot. I don't think anything tops so far for me personally. No, that's. Like, like anything else below that's just like eh, it's okay yeah but 04 is always that being a, like just being a Sox fan and a baseball guy and yeah. no backstory of it all and being there it's just one of those like nothing's Did, ever going to talk you got to go to a game too or no yeah, yeah. no I was in the hospital I oh. an amputee two days after oh really oh I that's, watched the whole thing in the hospital really <laughs> oh my goodness so, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's special so it kind yeah, of like yeah. all of it in together cause yeah yeah I guess it's like an emotional week, I guess you would say. Yeah, so they had the TV set up for you and everything? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. That's really awesome. Because mm -hmm. you usually get, like, the hospital, what, a couple channels? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was in, I was in Boston. Oh, okay. enough. Yeah, um, yeah. I pushed my surgery back, too, because of, on the 27th, because we were up 3 nothing. that's game four. Yeah, It'll yeah. be over tonight. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so you knew that, like, so when you did, when that did happen, you knew it was coming? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing that's ever going to replace no. that. There's no way. No, <laughs> unless one of my children grow up and do yeah. something phenomenal, crazy, then. That'll probably be it. Yeah, <laughs> till then. Uh, getting to pop culture, we like to do some top fives here. Um, and this kind of just helps the audience kind of like, is it maybe they want to check out. Do you have top five favorite movies? I do. 
For love of the game? Ah, Costner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A Time to Kill? Yep. Oh. The movie Stan. How high? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. It's humorous. Yeah. Midnight Express. Now, what's that one? Do it's I about a guy in the 70s smuggling a hash out of Turkey. Got sentenced to jail. He tried to get it overturned, and then they, he found out about this express thing, like escape, and you take a certain way, it'll get you out of the country. Oh, nice. It's a really good movie. I'll check that out. Um, I do love How High. That's awesome. Time to Kill, though, is... It's a movie you haven't seen. Samuel L. It. Samuel L. Kills in there. You know, Matthew McConaughey's in mm -hmm. that. Great, great movie. It's a movie. good eye-opener movie on oh, like, yeah. culture and like a certain time of the, in the world. I hope they die and I hope they mm -hmm. burn in hell. I was like, you feel it. Mm -hmm. you know? And if anybody has a father that has a little daughter, will feel exactly how we felt. Yeah. We'd do the same thing. <laughs> great movie. Mm -hmm. uh, top five TV shows. Simpsons. Oh. Family Guy. Big Bang Theory. I do love that, yep. I don't watch much TV. You watch like the same three things over and no. over. I'm at that point too. <laughs> like I watched this when I was almost that was all see, the time. I, 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 I can anything mob I can go down. And watch. Oh yeah, yeah. Any of that genres are easy for me to watch. Have you seen the Many Saints of New York? Uh, no. New York yet? No. A lot of flack on this movie. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not gonna give spoilers. It is the story of Dicky Moltisani. If you thought it was gonna be a uh, Tony Soprano. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, about him, all about yeah. him. It's not. Um, so uh, I've been meaning to check it out. My brothers hated it. I, I liked it, but I took it for what it was. Yeah. If you think this is going to be like a normal Sopranos thing, don't. It's very rare to watch something that has to do with like mob or any ties of that that I do not like. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I always get into it, even the the ones that aren't so great. Right. You know? And get into it because I hate to say this, that time of year seemed like it was a good time to be around alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have a top five musical artists? I do. I always put M on top. Greatest rapper of all time? Absolutely. Hands down. I don't disagree. <coughs> Up Church. Okay. It's a Tennessee, white, East country, does rap does everything it's great it's very and it's not about like cars it's about actual work and like living life yeah yeah jelly roll tech nine bob marley ah i do love bob marley i was put you in a better mood something's going wrong put some bob that legend album is like because it has everything on it that's right you know absolutely i probably bought that album like so many different times and lost it because you can always like find it somewhere oh yeah and then, you know, I'll be like, man, I want, oh, it's right there, nine ninety nine. All right, yep. yeah, I'll buy that again. Because it never gets old, no matter. It's an old album. It never gets. And it's the messages of the songs that yeah you got to listen to. Yeah, it always makes you feel a little bit better. Absolutely. I mean, because Sublime is like one of my all time favorite bands too, and they were you know reggae very heavily influenced. And I can't say that I listened to a lot of reggae over mm -hmm. the years. Probably been like Bob Marley, mm -hmm. or Tosh. And sometimes sublime thrown in there, but uh, I do agree on Eminem number one. Uh, still can do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a little different, but if you understand, like Eminem, he's almost fifty. You can't yeah. put out the same thing about talking about throwing you in a trunk of a car and killing you. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're fifty years old now, dude. Yeah. Um, were you? What's the guy that called him out? Uh, MGK. <laughs> Machine Gun Kelly. What did you think of that? His diss song, Machine Guns Kelly diss song was good. It was very catchy. But the beard is weird. <laughs> yeah, but it was, did you really, like, why? Yeah. I don't know why anybody would, though. He, Eminem could rhyme the word orange. Yeah. Why would you go after a man? And he does his research. Like, when he's going to come at you, he literally digs. And oh, that's yeah. why it's not ASAP response. It's very, I'm going to find my information out and Damn destroy right. it. Because... Kill shot is a. It was better. It was way better. <laughs> it was way better. And you're like, it very entertain. Again, Eminem is always entertaining with his raps and comes up with stuff. And it's the way it's supposed to be. 
Yeah. Machines was was like a song. Like it was very catchy. Like I was, yeah, I can get into this beat. It's not supposed to be that way. Yeah, because if Eminem does a diss, it's like throw me a beat. I don't care about the chorus. Yeah, he's just gonna go on. There's yeah. gonna be no hook. He's just gonna. He does it, and like if you go back to like early two thousands, like with Ja Rule and Irv Gotti, if you listen to Eminem's like diss song, like Haley's Revenge, stupid. Yeah, he's he's no one can top him. No, never. And Eight Mile is like such a phenomenal movie. It was you know? better than Get Rich or Die Trying. Never saw it. <laughs> <laughs> don't. I'm not gonna lie, I was never big on Fifty Cent. He just never he never did anything for me really. Yeah. Um, I I yeah I had Get Get Rich or Die Trying, but. The songs when everybody else was on them were the ones I liked better. Mm -hmm. You know, I feature. never. He's a good feature artist. Yeah, like I never cared about his actual rapping. Like, if he wasn't produced by Dr. Dre, would anybody ever have cared? It's a good question. Well, yeah. I guess you say the same thing about M, though, because nobody would take out an M until nobody Dre. did. But Eminem and Fifty, like lyrically, though. Oh, there's not a good. Eminem comparison. probably doesn't need a beat, no. and you'd be entertained no, by it. Just, there's no good. Comparison. You can't yeah. compare anybody to M. I can't even. No. I think he's one of those that you put here. Yeah. And then you make a list of top. Everybody five. else. Yeah. Yeah. His. He was. Yeah. In my opinion, he's the best. There's some others that fall in there. It's tough when it comes to Tupac and Biggie because they died so early, so they didn't really have time to like make bad albums. Because Ready to Die is my favorite album. Um, that's like my favorite rap album. That's probably my favorite musical album, and. But he never had a chance to make something like bad because he was dead at 24. <laughs> right, know? and then music progressed and started to change a little bit. So yeah. what would have happened if he was around today? Who knows? Because you mean a little older than M, but they're probably Dre's still going, Snoop's still going. They'd probably still be going. It's it, but a lot of people don't care. Like if you look at like Jay Z, Jay Z was so great in the beginning, then did a lot of shit. And then got good again, then did crap again. Like, mm -hmm. the longer you're out there, it's gonna water down your music. Yep. I think, you know. There's only so much stuff you can c come up with, and some things are, even with them, some albums aren't that great. They're yeah. good. Yeah. But they're not like some of them. So it really gets into a lot of debate because Tupac and Biggie are always thrown out there. Tupac left a lot more behind, but it's like, can you put them up there when they never had that growth of becoming not so great. Mm -hmm. Or um, mastering their craft. They already yeah. could do it really well with yeah. one or two albums. But the longer you do something, you, you know, learn, yeah. and you start to do things, and you learn different. So Pac, I think, would have been phenomenal if he was still around. I mean, he left so much behind. It was crazy. You're like, how is a new Tupac album coming out? Right, once it. <laughs> you know, it came been. out for years. I wouldn't be surprised if someone comes out in 2022, you're going to be like, where did they find this? Right. You know? mm -hmm. um, all right, let's get into my favorite segment of the show, which is blank versus blank. I'm going to give you two things, two people, two anything. you got to pick one and, and tell me why. USA softball or USSSA softball? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's a tough one. Yeah. I'm going to go U-Trip. And I'm an A. I'm a USA umpire. Yeah. I started with U-Trip. Okay. And I think it's the, my biggest problem with USA is the height. They're allowed to okay. go 12. It's 6 to 12. Okay. 12 feet's a little high. Yeah. And so it's the angle of it. And then the pace of the game. U-Trip seems to be more faster, more faster, yeah. competitive. Everything seems a little more juiced. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. you take... I've seen, I've seen it. You've probably seen it. People that are like, yeah, they could swing a bat correctly or hitting a ball out of you, Dickie. Yeah. I mean, that has nothing to do with skill level. That's a bat and a ball. Yeah. Because the balls, I know the ball is more compressed and harder. Oh, and you can trip. just, you can just tell. And the bats are more juiced. Especially when you use the blue dots, they just go. Yeah. Anybody can. Now, the funny thing, when you say like the different, like the straight, I could never tell a difference. I go to ASA, I'll go to U trip. I don't know. Rule, like if you break down the rule aspect of it, yeah, and playing it, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. It's the Pitching, ball, and bat. Yeah. Change a little bit. And I'm sure there's some quirky little rules that are different in between. I think, because um, you say any ball that goes out of play, it's two bases from the time of okay. the throw. It doesn't matter if it came from left field, pitcher, or the catcher. It goes out of play, it's two bases gotcha. from the time of the throw. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure U trip is outfield's different. Outfielder throws it, and outfielder throws it. See, because I jump in the mall and I. 
tell, I'll tell you what. I don't know the rules. Yeah. I guess I don't. Yeah. Um, more responsible for the success of the New England Patriots, Tom Brady or Bill Belichick? Bill Belichick. I like that answer. Absolutely. He bought the groceries. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you mean he made the meal. He got it all done and made it. Yeah. And you mean, you got to give Brady credit because he obviously listened and seen it and like paid attention. Yeah. But Belichick was doing it a long time before Brady was even around. I like that answer. Um, do you like playing or umping better? Oof. Umpire. Okay. I still love to play, but... As time I, goes on, kind of just, is yeah. it more enjoyable? Yeah. I tell myself I'm coming back to play. Yeah. Doesn't happen. <laughs> no. Umpiring for sure. That's why I tell like people have tournaments. Let I me mean, know. I'm. It's not even about money with me, even yeah. if it's slow pitch. Like it's just keeps me part of the game. Hey, if we have for, if you're available for the pickup league, we'd I love you. to have you come down. So Thursday, yeah. Thursdays are always my free day, so I'll definitely do your Thursdays, Tuesdays. Uh, I'll let you know. Yeah, I'll no, come down and do them. I appreciate it. So, um, if you could only watch one for the rest of your life, the Red Sox or the Patriots? Red Sox. Didn't even ask. No, but right. more of a baseball guy. <laughs> Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock? 316. All day. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, as a Red fan. As much as I love The Rock, Austin owned that era. Well, that, that's what it is. Like, I yeah. used to watch in my younger days, and it was yeah. Austin just that I don't attitude. Like, yeah. you know what? I'm going to have my way. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Rock's The Rock. but They were so great together, too. When they were feuding, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, would you rather play, or uh, I guess it's two parts. Would you rather play or umpire at Atkinson or Martell? Atkinson's actually the one with the fence, isn't it? Yes, because Udicky's technically the yeah, street field. Yeah, and that's one off. We all call it Udicky, but it's not Udicky. No, so you knew Udicky's that one. Udicky's the far field. That's right. Yeah. Um, Millette, isn't that? Where is that one? It's Martell's Merrimack. the Merrimack field, the nice Merrimack field. Oh, the one down the back. Yeah, road. it has like the. I've only been up there stand. twice. Oh, okay. I've never been on that one. Yeah. But I, from doing the Dickie the other day, I actually like it. It's, it's nice. The lights suck though. There's a when light. you look. There's one of them that's out too. When you look up, yeah. like it, they're at the wrong angle. I had yeah. to keep my hat like this because I couldn't. That makes sense that they are because there's been times where I'm like, I can't see it. I can't yeah, see it. It's the angle of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're both beautiful fields. I mean, uh, two of my favorites. Um, rather, umpire, women, men's, or co ed? Co ed. I love seeing the girls burn. The guys are out play the dudes all day. I, I laugh. I will smile because it's, I don't know, a bunch of. You know how it is with the guys. I think they're all big, bad, and then you get this girl and she burns you. It's like, that's what you get. Well, it's because, you know, you get the girl line, and then sometimes people don't respect the girl. I, I don't like a lot of the sexist rules in it, no. but just like just like men, there's different levels of females, too. Absolutely. Because you definitely have some that can burn the guys, and then you have some that we know they can't. They just want to have fun. Yeah, you know, so there's there's a different caliber, and I you can't just like you can't say all men are the same because they're not. No, you know, obviously I can't hit like Josh Lee hits. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, no, no, that's good. I answer. like the co-ed because even the ones that just are out there to have fun. You mean? Yeah. And I'll be the first time if I'm umping and, and it's a bang bang play. More likely the girl's gonna get that call. Yeah. Sorry, Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> kind of screwed Danielle on uh, Sunday. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. Um, it happens. It does. I could. I was glad when you were there because I was like, "Oh, I can take a break." Yeah. All right, I'll take a break. I told Brett, I could do that. I could literally do slow pitch all day. Yeah. Like you mean maybe a break in between? Like maybe after doing, I do five games without a sweat. Doesn't yeah. bother me. Give me a break. Let me eat something. I'll go back out and do five more without even blinking. Yeah, I mean, I don't like. I, I was having more fun umping because I was a volunteer. Yeah. I was having more fun umping the people I knew because I could just make jokes. Mm -hmm. It was the people I didn't. That I was like, yeah, this isn't as fun anymore. Luckily for me, every team that I had, yeah, there was guys that I had umpired previously. Yeah, and they know how I am, so I'm pretty sure some of them talked like, just let it go, because yeah, he's not. And it's a trade tournament. I'm not gonna take your shit anyways. Yeah, toughest one, blank versus blank here. Greg Kelly or Brandon P. 
I can never say Brent Paraviche, the Godfather of softball. We're just calling me. We go backwards. Like, I call him the Godfather of Nashville softball. <laughs> you got to pick one. But don't put your feet to the fire because it's tough as one. <laughs> <laughs> See, me and Brandon go way back though. Yeah. It's like when I used to play, I've met Mr. Kelly. I want to say maybe four years ago. Yeah. And it's nothing against Mr. Kelly, but I gotta go Brandon. Yeah, I like them both a lot, but I Brandon. I've never heard a bad thing anybody's ever said about him. I love Brandon. Uh, that's that's why is. I was willing to help him. Mm -hmm. And know? he's he, just as well as Mr. Kelly, but yeah. me and Brandon go deeper back to when I played. Yeah. And Brandon was one of a handful of people that didn't, clearly I'm a guy with amputee. Yeah. And I don't care. I can be playing and I'm an amputee. I see a guy with one leg out there. I'm going to question it. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. It's nothing again personal. But Brandon was one of those that never was like, I always got leg like, yeah. Let me shade in or he can't. It was like, hmm. So. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. Really great guy. Mm -hmm. Well, John, I really appreciate you coming I appreciate on. I'll it was fun. Again. Absolutely. Um, but everybody out there, uh, continue to keep your heads up. If you're asked to wear a mask, wear a mask. Um, but yeah, until next week, let freedom ring.